I was telling a friend the other day this uh, this whole getting older thing. I man, it, it's really hard. Uh, I mean to sound like a whiner, but uh, I didn't expect it to be like this. Uh, and it happened real suddenly, you know, like. There wasn't any in between. I, it was like one minute I was this uh, dashing, svelte, young, uh, very athletic and fit person, and the next thing I know, I'm falling apart. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't complain. I guess I'm doing better than a lot of people my age, but uh, it happened pretty suddenly, and uh, you know, I have. Uh, COPD, which is a respiratory condition, so it makes it kind of hard to breathe. You feel short of breath often. Uh, psoriasis, that's a skin condition. It's just really it's just sensitive skin, but anywhere you ever had a scar, you know, it might flare up and it's like this, uh, it just, it makes your skin real itchy and, uh, uh, kind of flaky like uh, these sort of like scaly flaky kind of patches uh, it's really uncomfortable <clears throat> really uncomfortable really miserable and super unattractive uh, like it just destroys your confidence with women or uh, the opposite sex if you happen to be a woman yourself I guess uh, But surprisingly, uh, it's not uncommon. I mean, I guess a lot of people suffer from it as they get older, so at least I don't have to feel special that I'm the only one. Definitely a different feel on the streets nowadays uh, when you go out into the public. Things feel very different than they did before. Uh, yesterday, I was driving around on the plaza, cruising around the plaza, and I noticed, I mean, there was a lot more people out than I thought there would be. And, uh... I'd say at least half of them, if not more, were not wearing masks. Uh, so there's that portion of the population which seems to be not that concerned. I mean, certainly not like you would expect a busy day on the plaza to look. Uh, you know, last summer, on the same day of the year, I'm sure the plaza would have been, you know, basically wall-to-wall -wall people, uh, especially Indian Market, you know, I mean, the town just, our population more than doubles for Indian Market, so, uh, so, you know, certainly by measured against normal standards, there wasn't a lot of people out. But I was still surprised to see how many were. I'm not going out if I can help it. I mean, uh, I have a little bit. There's, uh, you know, I, I just picked a few select people to socialize with. I'm uh, not attending any big group gatherings or anything like that. Uh, even when I socialize with those people, I try to keep a distance from them, and I'm almost always wearing a mask. Uh, went on a hike with a really beautiful girl a few days ago, and uh, wore a mask. Uh, she wasn't wearing a mask. Uh, she's probably not as nervous as I am. She's a little younger, probably a bit healthier. 
doesn't have as much need to fear for her own personal safety, I guess, but um, she seemed to tolerate that I was wearing a mask and not be too put off by it. Then I tried to keep six feet away from her too, although I did, and I did let my mask down. You know, I mean, I didn't keep it on all the time. I, you know, put it down below my cheek, my chin sometimes. And just, um, I don't know. Anyway, it's weird the spectrum of reactions from people. saying, you know, going out into public is a whole other experience now than it was a year ago. I'm having a little coffee here on the drive out to Nam Bay. This is, in my opinion, uh, just one of the most beautiful little stretches of highway in the world. Uh, we've got this, uh, great view when you come over to Suki Hill here and look down into the valley, the Espanola Valley there. Right now, it's uh, there's a lot of smog in the air, uh, so you can't see very far because of the, the haze. There's this huge fire going on uh, somewhere in New Mexico, and I guess it's totally out of control. So... That's a good reason for me to stay home with my COPD, although uh, it's not too bad yet. But if it gets worse, I might wind up, you know, fleeing home, going indoors and keeping all the doors and windows closed. in New Mexico, you know, those of us who did grow up here in New Mexico, we share something, you know, that people uh, from other places probably, well, I guess it's the same wherever you are, you, you, know, you grow up in your own locality and you share something with the people you grew up with that people from other places just will never understand. Is that something we all have in common? But uh, we had a lot of freedom. And, uh, Santa Fe is kind of this this hub of New Age thought, and uh, you know there was you know, this big subculture of kind of hippies that that came here in the seventies and. Yuppies in the late 80s and 90s. Uh, and just straight out rich people that uh, have flooded here in the last 20 years and really changed the feel of the place. A lot of kind of Don't get me wrong, I'm not, I mean, I'm a child of a hippie, you know, I'm a hippie kid, I am not close-minded or averse to alternative lifestyles, but some of them uh, really take, push it to the limit of, of common sense, and, and many of them, they, they, they want to be hip, they want to be considered hip. And I guess that's why they embrace so strongly their kind of new age beliefs and doctrines and lifestyles and dogmas. 
but uh, you know I see most of them as rather hip hypocritical a classic example of that would be uh, you know the lady uh, you know who cuts you off in traffic so she can be the first in line at the to get into the Whole Foods parking lot, uh, and then you look at her bumper, and, and it's got, you know, this bumper sticker that says, you, you know, uh, coexist, or something like that, or, you know, visualize world peace, or something, and, and then, you know, here she is, you know, like a maniac, driving through traffic with her Beamer, or her Mercedes, uh, not so trendy in Santa Fe anymore, but most of them have Subarus, but, uh, you get the idea, uh, and, uh, why is she in a hurry? Uh, you know, she's not in a hurry because she has to get to work. It's not because, you know, there's a sale on tofu and she wants to be the first to get some. Uh, it's, you know, maybe it's because she's late to her meditation class or, uh, you know, uh, late to her mindfulness awareness group or, uh, you know, something like that or, I know this sounds a bit like a rant, and, and I guess it is, but it's just become such a cliche in Santa Fe that it, it, it's all, you know, a lot of people, locals, have come to just laugh at, at you know, the whole um, New Age movement, because it, it's become a joke. I love that J.P. Sears guy because he's he has you know he has in such a beautiful way and very comedically uh, been able to put his finger on that uh, kind of hypocrisy and, and the uh, oh I don't know just the irony of of a lot of of you know what comes out of that you know these people who consider themselves to be woke or uh, think that they're somehow uh, more aware than others and uh, more conscious is a word they like to use. Uh, I guess, you know, most of them have probably experienced some kind of, of cathartic transformation in their lives whereby, you know, at one point they were a lot less woke uh, and suddenly uh, their mind was opened to uh, a new way of looking things, looking at things and um, and that's great and I'm, I'm not putting that down, I mean I'm, I'm happy for them and I'm glad that, you know, because Many of them are very, they come from, you know, very materialistic backgrounds. They have, you know, very wealthy families and, uh, you know, they come from these, this kind of, uh, and they come to Santa Fe uh, seeking spiritual growth. And uh, uh, maybe 30 years ago, you might have found that in Santa Fe. I think it's, it's pretty much over now. I mean, it's just you know, wealthy trust funders who want to somehow, uh, y y you know, who want to pretend that they're woke or pretend that they're conscious, but they're not. I mean, you cannot be woke or conscious and, in, in, you know, we're all awake unless we're sleeping and we're all conscious unless we're unconscious. And, uh, if you want to work with energy, you know, become uh, an electrician. Um, all right, coming down into 
Pahuaki. And uh, always drive the speed limit when you come through here. It's 45 miles an hour, and they are serious about it. They will enforce it. And um, so just slow down 45. That uh, beautiful hill you see that's dead ahead is uh, those, they're kind of like fossilized sand dunes. Um, it's called Hakona. And actually, the little one that's, you, I don't know if you can see it with this camera, but there's two sets of them. There's a little one in front of a big one. And the, the little one, which is closer, is called Hakonita, you know. Uh, feminine, uh, what do you call it, feminine conjunctive with the, uh, uh, Spanish, if it ends with ito or ita, it means, usually it means small or smallish or I guess I'm done ranting for now. Times when I come out here, I feel like it's like a sanctuary. You know, I've, I've been, I came out here when I had lost everything pretty much in my life and I was living out of my car and I had no money. And, this was a place where I could be safe. No money, no insurance, no nothing. I just sit here and send out resumes. I had an internet connection here, which was about, the, about all. 